Okay. So you, you wanted to become a therapist. My dad's a therapist. Uh, pardon, what did you say? My dad is a therapist. Uh, yes. A psychologist okay. for 40 yeah. years. Yeah. Great. Well, I, as I told you, I, I never wanted to become a, a teacher because I always interpreted myself as a, a student and I still am and I will ever be. And as a teacher in the very end, I, I, I was a student too, a teacher who learned by the students. And well, um, why did I become a teacher in the very end was because I was afraid to become an artist. Um, an artist. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, I thought I was not good enough as a painter or a drawer or a singer or a musician um, or a writer or an actress. And of course, I was afraid to starve to death as an artist. Yes, so, uh, and as becoming a teacher for creative subjects, I thought, hmm, that's a good compromise right yeah. um yes um and then when i had that uh, training as a teacher i realized that i really liked to work with the with the students right their humor their honesty their vividity can you say that they are so vivid right yeah. um yes and then i said okay it is really a good compromise and um, well, already in my study, I dealt with um, with alternative systems mm -hmm. in our German education system. Um, but in the very end, I decided to enter the public school system. Like here in Germany, we have that saying, Gang durch die Institutionen. Mm -hmm. to change something that means to to step into the system to uh, change it mm -hmm. possible right it was one of the sayings in the 68 movement here the mm -hmm. student movement well i was too young for that time but i was very influenced by that thinking yes okay and then i said to myself well i could work in those alternative schools great there are many uh, but, well, I came from uh, a comprehensive school and I uh, liked that liberal atmosphere there. Well, I was in a very good school in Cologne, uh -huh. which was, by the way, a model for one of the Berlin schools I worked later. And um, this also modeled uh, that uh, Cologne school, so they worked together. It was very interesting to meet my headmaster in a conference at my Berlin school. Yes, my headmaster from uh, Cologne. Mm -hmm. Well, um, yes, concerning your questions, well, I always dealt with those ideas of alternative schooling. Mm -hmm. And um, in the end of my first examines, I did a research work about the question, what did pupils really learn for their life in their mm -hmm. schools? Uh, I did it at... Um, at um, uh, not my pedagogic, my my pedagogical um, teachers, but at a uh, psychologist teacher, and he was very uh, proud of all those uh, statistics. Yes, and he um, told me to do it in that statistics way mm -hmm. and to correlate the boys with the girls and the and the religions and the the ages and. I was totally overwhelmed and he did not get that I was overwhelmed and I did not get that he did not get that I was overwhelmed. Uh, and in the very end, um, I did not succeed this research yeah. because of my not succeeding the statistics work. Um, it was a pity because it was really a good idea. We have here in Germany, Gerald Hüter. He is a scientist uh, dealing exactly with that question. Well, and I say, mm -hmm. years later, what what are the pupils actually learning for their lives, right? Yeah. Um, because when I was in my 20s, I already felt like, what have I learned for my life in my school? Yes, okay, art, music, English, French, all those subjects I liked. 
Uh -huh. What did I learn concerning solving problems, getting in touch with people? Um, and actually, nowadays, I think uh, doing my taxes. Yeah? So I, all those really realistic stuff to deal with, to cope with, yes? Nothing. Instead, I learned formulas and uh, rules and, uh, and how to survive uh, uh, examinations, yes? Yeah. And how to play tricks on the teachers to survive, yes? That's why, of course, I realized the tricks of my pupils as well. Mm -hmm. If they did it well, I overlooked them, right? Because that's also... <laughs> okay. you, you know, see, I, tell you, I, I used to um, survey my students, and this is a you know college course, but I would ask them um, for like two years, I'd say, what are the things you wish you had learned, right? That you didn't learn in school. What do you wish you had learned? So the number one answer across like, I don't know, a thousand students, was I wish we had they had taught us, you know, financial information, how to do our taxes, how to get loans, how to do, they all said that. They all know what they don't know and wish they had been taught. And then like the number two was a little bit split between men and women, but the for men, the number two answer was uh, useful life skills, um, you know, like how to fix things, how to do things that, that would be useful to them. And then for women, actually, it was interesting. It was um, basically psychology, like how to deal with depression, things that how to manage your life and stress, yeah. things like yeah. that. And pretty consistently, they answered that. Like those were the the, the top responses every time. Um, and and yeah. when you think about it, those are good answers, right? Like you know how to manage relationships, how to um, how to deal with depression, how to deal with stress. Yeah. Those are really important life skills. <laughs> Yes, yes, and um, well, by by the way, when I did my first exam, and I had to um, um, to um, to repeat my my um, examination work, I just did a theoretical one, which which um, was about what do I think that people should learn for living a good life. And that was interesting because that was the basics for my work as a teacher. And that was Transaktionsanalyse. Um, um, it was this um, problems before everything else. So if there is a problem, it has to be solved in the group before people can manage anything else, yes? So, so this group dynamics about, well, what can you do to feel good in a group yourself? What can you do as a teacher? Because if there is a relaxed, uh, anxiety-free atmosphere, you are open to, to learn, even for me, math or chemistry or physics or all that stuff, right? And, um, well, um, and I stopped my training much later as um, a teacher because there again I did not succeed my examination work uh, in my first run. I had always those perfectionism um, expectations to myself uh -huh. uh, and um, because of this kind of burnout already um, in my 20s I needed more time to uh, end my second examination, doing the two examination here in Germany first during your university and then during the training of uh, becoming a teacher, right? So, and and um, the first school I entered was in Bonn, a private school, and uh, the director asked me, headmaster, headmaster, head, oh, well, is, is headmaster the, the correct word? Uh, I think for, I don't know what it is for Germany here. They generally oh. call it the director or the principal. Yeah, or, director. Uh, uh, because headmaster, I don't think that it is housekeeper or something like this, headmaster. If it was Hogwarts, it's headmaster. Oh, no, no, that is the caretaker. Okay, okay, because I want to be clear that it was uh, really the director. Okay, it is another word, headmaster. Well, and he asked, well, Mrs. Schmitz, how does it come that you took so much time to end your uh, teaching? 
as a trainer and uh, training me as a teacher. And then I was considering, do I lie or do I be honest? And I was honest and I told him the truth that I had those psychological problems of uh, got, getting stuck and no idea what to write. Blah, 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 blah. And then he said, well, and what did you do then? I said, well, I, I, um, I did therapy and, and now I feel fit enough to deal with all that. And he said, congratulations, welcome to my team. That's what I need. People who, um, who get to know their problems and to cope with them instead of ignoring them and pretending as if, welcome. So, and this man, I really like to call his name, Hans Biegert from that public school, uh, Hebo in Bonn, Bad Godesberg. Really, um, he, he, he was such a help. And, and, and he helped me later to, to, to keep going on being honest. And, and that's very important as a teacher to, um, to support the students to become and stay honest themselves too. Yeah, right? I agree. Yes, and when I came to Berlin and entered my first comprehensive school, a wild group of little 10 years old, and I know there were eight or nine already, um, uh, and, and one Carsten, he was the biggest monster, and I was sitting at my desk weeping because I could not deal with those <laughs> very vivid uh, students. And then he said, yeah, Mrs. Schmitz, Mrs. Schmitz. And I said, well, what is he going to tell me now? And then Mrs. Schmitz, do you know what I like about you best? I said, what's going on now? What mean thing? And then he said, you are able to show your feelings. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, so it makes you real. Yes. So, and showing your feelings, being honest, um, helped me throughout my life as a student. Um, I did not learn it, yes, like we spoke about it, uh, to show up openly, to uh, to tell somebody that you are depressed. Uh, but that's the beginning to, uh, to uh, be able to cope with it, yes, to really yeah. name things and to stand up for it. And if people uh, may not support you, they are not the right people for you. Mm. Or that would not be the right school for me. Uh, and it was the right school. It, it really helped me to become confident in all what I did. So the administration and was supportive of you? Very supportive. Well, it was a very little school, 20, I think, maximum colleagues. And it was an old villa close to the River Rhine. You could listen oh, to the ships nice. passing. <laughs> and you had a view out of the windows to the Siebengebirge. They are seven mountains, woody mountains, straight along the road, um, along the Rhine. And in the little rooms of that villa, maximum 10 to 16 pupils, uh, students could could be in there. And I was the only music and art teacher and my English teacher team was so supportive. And the students, they were so open-minded and free and liberal because of that free and liberal atmosphere. Uh -huh. And um, nothing was angst-driven, yeah, so. Um, how, how old were the students you were teaching? You said around 10 years old? Well, I started, well, the, the school started at class 7 to 13, class 13, and and uh, my students were um, students from class 7 to, well, sometimes also till 13, but I was not allowed to take the exams of the very older ones, yes, yeah? so, so my education focused on class uh, 1 to 10 normally, yes, but I also were deputy teacher for the older ones sometimes. Um, well, and the age was about 13 to maybe 18. Okay. okay. Yeah, so, and um, well, have a look at the uh, notes. So well, let me ask you, how do you get, like, are these students taking your class? Are they selecting your class or are they required to take your class? Uh, they required. They okay. were required to take the class. Well, it is a very restricted system in Germany. Uh, you have to take special classes. Um, um, when you are going to uh, pass your final exams, the last three years, there is a system of choosing subjects. Yes. 
And me in Northgrand Westphalen in Cologne, uh, there was a time in the 80s, no, in the 70s, um, uh, where you could really choose a lot. That's why I did not have chemistry or physics in my final exams, but English and uh, uh, French. And if you had two subjects out of one area here, languages, you could choose religion, <laughs> religion to, um, to um, withdraw a subject you did not like, which was the natural science for me. And in my fourth subject, I had pedagogics, a social science. So this was a great time. So I had only mathematics, but um, I think only till class 11, and then I could even leave out mathematics. So I had subjects like all those creative subjects, but the pity was there was no money for art and music. So you had to decide what subject to take. And that's why I choose, chose um, uh, art. Okay, but, but this very free system was only for a very short time. And uh, well, I can only refer to Berlin. Here it is a strict system, what you have to do. Um, that's why I always told my, my uh, students, if I had to uh, pass my exam, my, my, my final exams uh, here, poh, my, my, my grades would not been that great <laughs> like it was years ago, right? So they have to do math till the end and uh, German and one language, at least one language, which if they do their abitur, they only have to, they also have to have two languages, of course. Yes, mostly English and French. Yes. Um, yeah, language isn't really a requirement here. I mean, they learn English barely. They study it for 12 years and they're still terrible at it. <laughs> their own language. Yes, yes. Well, that's, that's the, um, I say, danger if you are born in an English-speaking country like America, Canada, England, Ireland, uh, you don't need it that much, don't uh -huh. you? Uh, well, we need it who speaks German in Switzerland, in Austria, mainly, and that's it. Luxembourg, maybe a bit, Belgium, well... Yes, you really need to learn it. And um, well, more and more Spanish is offered, yeah. um, but mostly English, French, Spanish. Here in uh, Berlin, in the very end, I worked at a German Polish European school. That's why I also learned spell Polish. Um, there are many. Um, European schools here in Germany, especially here in Berlin, every kind of language, yes, Italian, German, Spanish, German, um, uh, Russian, German, Greek, German, yes. And but of course, are those languages offered at the public schools though, or is it a more limited selection? Yes, the limited selection more or less is English and French, and more and more also Spanish as an alternative to French. Yes. In, in my school it was um, it was amazing in Cologne in the 70s my English teacher also taught Russian and I wanted to learn Russian but I was told oh you are such a fit student you have to learn Latin if you want to study later <sighs> and that's what I did I never used Latin never ever and uh, it was just a pity for me that I have never learned Russian. Yes. Because I studied we... Russian, actually. Great, great. <laughs> ah, uh, I used okay. it a little bit when I went to Ukraine uh, years ago. Yes, there they speak well, sometimes more Polish than Russian, but uh, well, Ukraine is a mixture of Russian and Polish somehow. Uh, the Ukrainians say, of course, it is more Polish, but it is, of course, I think more. Mm, you may yeah, say it that. depends on where you are in Ukraine. Ukraine was, uh, yes. who knows how it is now. Uh, I was like in Kiev, it's still pretty Ukrainian, but the further you go east, like in Sumy, where I went, uh, pretty much almost everyone spoke Russian, like, or, or much more Russian Ukrainian, we'll say. Yes, um, I'm on the eastern part, right. But uh, how did it come that you learned Russian at school? 
Um, I wanted something interesting. And so I, I was a history major and you have to major in a, or you have to have like a subdivision in another culture. So I studied Russian history and Russian language to fulfill that requirement. It's just, I've never been big on American history. So I, I like world history. I, I teach American history now, but I've always been a, like, I like Rome. I like, I like the, what's we'll the off the beaten path, you know, Chinese history, Japanese history, Russian history. I like to know yeah. a little bit of everything. U.S. history is not that interesting to me. Yes, yes. Yes, just looking at your family life. Yes, you are very open to other cultures, ethnics. Yes, that's the way how we got to meet each other and train, right? Yeah. yeah. You know what's okay. fun? One of the things I, I tell my students, you know, I was like, you know, your life is a lot better if you have social skills. And I, I've noticed this generation that's coming And it could be the school system. It could be just the society. And the fact that everybody grows up with cell phones now, but they're not good at talking to people. They're not good at making friends. Um, like my cousin, she came down here. Her daughter went to college here for a year and she made like one friend in a year. And I'm like, man, I can go on a train and I'll make friends with the people <laughs> sitting next to me. Yes, and uh, lasting friendships, right? Yeah. If and we and, uh, have not I, met each other yeah, ever since, years. But, uh, but we kept in touch, yes. And, um, well, that's, that's actually something that the younger people maybe are not trained yes so in this world of online dating especially you can ghost very quickly very easily yeah. yes um this um, anonymity anonym this being anonymous and this um yes which is totally opposite the way i described what is important to me yes to show up mm -hmm. um Though my, <laughs> my perfectionism sometimes really gets in my way, or sometimes much too often, yes. Yeah. Um, um, for example, I wanted to create an online course. The, the topic is interesting. It is about the power of self-love uh -huh. from sabotage to self-support. Everything was, was set up, but I did not go on. Uh, online yes because in the very end oh no this or that and, and i'm not good at the technique and da -da 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 -da. um yes so so i think i have to undergo my my uh, online course myself first <laughs> From let me time. know I'll t i'd love to take a look at that ah yes that's fine um well um Well, back back to my experience with the school system. Well, um, it is very restricted. Of course, you have to do this and that. Mm -hmm. And uh, the longer I, I I was working as a teacher, the more I realized more lessons to give uh, and more restrictions to fulfill, more tests, even in creative subjects like art and music and drama. Yes. So um, what I did was, uh, well, having a lot of arguments with uh, colleagues and also controls of colleagues because they found that uh, the marks of my students were much too good. Oh. And uh, then I laid open the way of uh, controlling my pupils and they were kind of amazed because there were a lot of controls but but the way i controlled was together with my pupils oh. or students better to say um for for, for example um uh, in the end of each week we discussed the oral production and we discussed for those who had some problems what they could do to improve and all the the written tests They were firstly prepared very well, and they were more or less also um, group works like essays. Uh, 
mm -hmm. uh, or, or in art, um, creative group works, in music, creative group works. For example, they were um, creating a film and underlying it with, um, with music they found suitable. Yes, or yes, they worked a lot with the modern media like um, the, the topic of um, art history. And um, I presented some pictures throughout the history of art and they could choose as a group one painting or drawing mm -hmm. and put it somewhere in a film they made, but not the picture itself. They replayed the picture, yes? For example, um, uh, maybe you know that a painting of Magritte where you see a person standing in front of a mirror and he does not see himself in the mirror, but himself from behind. Mm -hmm. Yes, so the surrealism. And uh, so, so, for example, the film of the students started with that image and then uh, the boy on the first row turned and it was clear it was somebody else and then the uh, role play started or the scenery of that that um, uh, video, right? So, um, well, this <laughs> under undermining, you can say, the system was planning with the students, uh, taking their interests in my planning, and also planning to uh, give the marks together with them. Uh -huh. um, for example, I created a system with the criteria we had first to, let's say, those films, yes? Um, the, the correct time that it is ready, um, that the picture must be in the film, that um, uh, the, the, the amount of creativity, bep, 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 and the names of the pupils of that class. And everyone got that sheet of paper and when we saw the film, they they gave points. And it was clear for this aspect, three points for that. So that in the very end, we have a point system in Germany. 15 points could be given. That means a one, a one plus. That is the best grade, right? So, and um, their control of uh, the film in that way uh, gave 50% of their uh, mark and my decision, the other 50%. And they were always much stricter than me. So it was good <laughs> that I had 50%, the other Noticed percent. Noticed that too, yeah. Yes. So, um, so this feeling of being involved and have also power, yes, to uh, decide the topic, the method, and, and even the mark in the very end, that was one of many reasons people said they they felt angst free yes so they they felt very comfortable laid back and they knew uh, even if everything went wrong they had a chance another chance yes with an oral examination something like this and they all came through yes if they really wanted to come through all those exams to pass then they did right and um Yes, what also helped me very much was that non-violent communication um, by Marshall Rosenberg. I think you, you know that, right? Non-violent communication by Marshall yes. Rosenberg. No, I don't know that one. Oh, that's so helpful because um, if you deal with that, you learn that we all have wishes and we want them to be fulfilled. Our needs to be seen and heard and met. And we have strategies how to do that. And sometimes those strategies are of use, sometimes no more or never. And um, first to be aware of our needs uh, makes it clearer why we have some strategies. For for example, the pupils we 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 um, we dealt with the strategies first, you know, with the needs. Mm -hmm. And uh, a boy said, for example, I need to chew chewing gum, which was totally forbidden chewing chewing gum. And then he said, well, but if I chew it, I feel more relaxed, and I need to be relaxed. 
-hmm. And that's why I said, okay, then Chu Chuinga. So we had many new rules in our classroom, but it was clear that by leaving the classroom, uh, oh. there is a world of other rules. And they had to uh, throw out their, uh, their chewing gum into the dustbin before leaving. Yeah. What was really amazing that in the end, I did not see anyone chewing chewing gum. <laughs> yes. So because they they were allowed, yes. Yeah, so that was or or one one always said I I I well I can do I can't do it with with my chair here. I I I want to swing on my chair. Yes, yes. That makes me look like crazy. But uh, then others said, well, but my need is to concentrate. And when I see you doing like this, I cannot do. Okay, can you do it a bit softer? Yes. So. So yes, so that that everyone more or less could uh, well the, the best need of course what I, I I would like to sleep longer and keep in bed hmm? yes I said well that's a problem because this I cannot fulfill yes because there is a duty to go to school here in Germany we all know yes so um, you know it's funny you mentioned the the rules because one of the things I've noticed um, that the public school systems really around the world do sort of acclimate you to very strict environments right they're getting you used to environments where you have to follow lots and lots of rules sometimes arbitrary rules and, and it sort of i think that sort of feeds into a sort of neurosis that people have yes. where they never feel relaxed yes always being under pressure to 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 sit like this to uh, to behave like that um it, to to be uh, like uh, the the given teacher expects you to be yes so so that's what they learn to behave the way uh, you are expected to behave yes um, and that's why they seem to, yeah it doesn't seem like that would stimulate creativity or free no, thinking or problem no. solving no creativity no problem solving no social um, behavior because mm -hmm. what what you learn is faking pretending lying yeah. uh, and and um, and well i think my students were really as honest as they could be and 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 was was so great was i could really go on being as honest as i wanted to be when my father was going to die mm -hmm. i often sat there uh, weeping Yes, especially when I returned from Cologne uh, after weekend, um, I was sitting there and, and, and there was one English group in the 10th class and they knew when we have English in the first lesson, Mrs. Schmitz comes from Cologne and they even asked, Mrs. Schmitz was, and I was weeping and they, and they could, could, could help it, yes, or hold it, they could hold it, right? Because I said, it has nothing to do with you. And you know, after some moments, I will go on. And when my father died, I was ill for some weeks because I managed everything with my sisters and with my mother. And when I returned, the first lesson, I had once again English in my first lesson on Monday, I did like nothing happened because I felt like, so now my father is dead, everything's okay. Um, I go on now. and. And they behave totally normal. But after the lesson, some pupils came to me and said, well, Mr. Schmitz, everything's okay with you. I said, well, what's going on? Yes, because hey, that's not normal, isn't it? I said, you're totally right. That's not normal. Yes. And, and you did not dare to ask me. Yes, Mr. Schmitz, everything's okay? Well, we, we, we do it now. I said, yes, thank you. And the next lesson I said, uh, thanks to some of your classmates, um, I will tell you something, yes. And, and well, this always in, including my personality as well, information about my life and also about my wrongdoings. Yes, mm -hmm. also, also by saying I was wrong, I'm sorry. So important. Well, this refers once again to what I already dealt with in my study, this um, being honest, uh, showing up, um, um, 
and and even when I sometimes felt like showing up, yes, in that um, first uh, talk interview, job interview with uh, Hans Biegert, mm. I was really shortly about to pretend as well. But um, I have always made the experience, thanks especially also to Carsten, um, being honest is the way to get in touch to people. Yeah. And if you get in touch to people, they trust you. And if there is this, this relationship of trust uh, they open up and especially as a teacher if you if you can open people they are open also for learning and also for learning some boring stuff and grammar is boring stuff and sometimes learning the chords and the notes in music or how to uh, mix the colors in art or whatever in every subject there are some boring uh, things yes yeah? so um, and, and even in, in music when we dealt with their music, and then I sometimes said, oh, this reminds me of uh, Charpentier. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. And then they, they were rolling their eyes, and then I said, hey, guys, I listen to your music. Hmm? Oh, yes, yes, of course, of course. And then they listened to mine as well. Yes. And they were, in the end, when I left them in the dance class mostly, they were even capable of, of playing a fugue of, of Bach and, and, and enjoying classical Baroque music, dancing to medieval music. Yes. So uh, this opening up um, means also being tolerant, uh, being open minded. And well, I also um, studied ethics later. Uh, that was my most favorite subject because there you could also speak about sexual orientation, about, uh, well, all those female, male, um, gender uh, topics, yes, including art, music, English, yes. Going back to the idea of opening up, you know, yes. I've noticed, so when you form any kind of relation, any kind of bond with anybody, like personal relationships work on a sense of sort of exposing your own vulnerabilities, right? You have to be somewhat vulnerable when you open up and people are extremely guarded these days, right? So if, <sighs> if they can't, if they don't have the ability to open up to somebody, um, they, they can never form real bonds, right? Is it yes. they don't have the sort of long, deep friendships or the the abilities to make those kind of strong connections with people. Um, and I don't know if that's a consequence of their environments, like the public school, where, you know, you are very guarded. And it seems like today that there's a lot of. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of perceptions and like everybody's afraid to to, to speak their mind because they don't know how they're going to be perceived and they're afraid to yes. be vulnerable. Well, that, that is a very important point. You can actually open up only if you have that amount of self-confidence, right? Mm -hmm. And um, feeling self-confident, you can only, if you experienced already that, um, that experience of, I'm good the way I am. No matter if I fail, no matter if I'm looking this way or that way, or pronouncing this, that, or that. Imagine me now here during that talk, how many mistakes I did, yes? I don't want to think about it. Yes, <laughs> otherwise I say, no, we can never publish it. Um, but, but exactly that's the point, yes? So to uh, agree with yourself as a human being, uh, no matter how perfectionism uh, uh, orientated I am deep, deep down, because I also made that experience of I'm not good enough if I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. Yes, so and I can be even better. And bap, 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 bap. yes, I'm also raised like that. Um, but luckily, because of my psychological problems, my burnout <laughs> during my first exam and my second and later uh, um, that was the reason why I stopped working as a teacher. So I had my personal crisis, even as a therapist, mm -hmm. um, maybe as a therapist, because I thought everything would be okay if I just do some uh, uh, work out of the kinesiological um, uh, things or EFT or everything like that. That mm -hmm. worked, but just to function longer, but to function as somebody who does not function anymore. That means to say, finally, 
yes to my no, which I felt deep inside, that was a long way. I could help my clients, but to go that way myself, to say really no, no more. And this no is a yes to my no, and it is a yes to myself. Um, that, well, needed a lot of bravery and a lot of self-confidence that I'm even a good person if I'm stopped working as a teacher. And it was hard for me because my my students were in the 10th class. They were amidst their examinations. And it was really, well, I loved all my students, but the very last group, maybe because I was, um, well, if I can say that, maybe because I was very experienced in the very last time. Uh -huh. I, I think the best teacher I had ever been was in my last years. Uh -huh. And this was together with my last class. And to leave them amidst their examinations. And I was a teacher for English, art, music, and ethics in uh -huh. that group. Yes, yeah? so a teacher of five, four subjects stood there in front of them. And I was very honest, telling them, sorry, weeping even, uh, though I'm a therapist, um, I cannot do anything anymore. I, I have to undergo a therapy myself and I don't know whether I, I, I can manage to come before your final exams. Mm -hmm. And that could not come, yes. So, and this feeling of I left them alone, yes. That was hard for me to bear, but I could not anymore. I forgot things, I had no plan anymore. Normally under the shower, I had those ideas. Oh, I will do it like this. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I never got to the ideas. I, well, I, I forgot things I lost. So, okay, that was the start of the ending, right? Yes. So, um, but well, now the question is very important. How can students become self-confident? Oh. Of course, we, we, we cannot influence their, their, um, their family life, their socialization in general, but as a teacher, um, we can we put some guidelines for them yes we we can be a model for someone who shows up vulnerable we can be a model for um, uh, an uh, angst-free atmosphere because if somebody uh, laughed about somebody that was the one whom i said hey come on and the group always knew there was that protection of myself. I did not look away. I confronted that person and, and we dealt about what's going on here. Whereas, well, without um, um, suppressing that person now, yes, that would be another way of suppressing, but, but I was naming it, naming the conflict and integrating it so that it could be solved. And those students, that was really interesting, they they really could change yes they could uh -huh. change they they, they um, could also become more and more sociable and in so far also, also more confident in their abilities so that they did not need to suppress others to okay. feel better right I, I find a lot of confidence so most people are afraid of failure right and so a lot of confidence mm -hmm. just comes from being able to manage failure, right? And you really begin yes. to realize that it's not the end of the world, right? There's no yeah. real, usually there's not any real consequence to failure that's not self-imposed, you know? And this is also part of the way people interact. Like I, I sometimes tell my students, like, like when I was in high school or in college, like if I wanted to go on a date, you had to go ask a girl and she was like, they were gonna say no to you, to your face. <laughs> A lot of times yes. right and you just had to keep doing it and so after a yeah. while it didn't even really bother you if they said no because you're like well okay i tried because what you also learn with time is that like you don't remember sort of the times you failed as much as you remember the times you didn't try right yes. that sense of regret and, and that yes. really wears on you at, you know with time and so just just try like you know try if you want to raise you got to have the confidence just ask ask Mm, yes. but they, they don't have that ability like failure is, is just something like they're just terrified of it right and yes. like I was talking to one of the other professors because I used to when I first started teaching I would try to call on people say okay what do you think of this and it happened a couple times where some of the students I would ask them a question 
and they would literally sit there and withdraw and not answer and just yeah, shrink. Yeah, yeah, and, exactly. and I'm like, what, what are you afraid of? And I started to feel bad. Like I was picked and I, so I just stopped doing that. And the other professors noticed the same thing. Like, this is just normal interaction with somebody, but I guess they're afraid to be called out in front of yeah. their peers and they might say something Laugh wrong. It, to be ridiculed, to, to, to feel that embarrassment, right? Yes, but how, how can you support students by becoming vulnerable? Yes, by being vulnerable yourself. And if, if I was asked something I did not know, I did not say like, oh, that's not so important. I said, well, sorry, I don't know it, but it's a very good question. Would you please look it up for the next lesson? Yes. So, um, and um, when somebody did a mistake, I said, oh, that's an interesting mistake. How can we improve it? Mm -hmm. Yes. And I have a very nice um, experience once. I entered an 11th class in English and on the blackboard stood we laugh to Mrs. Schmitz. Uh -huh. And I stood there and I said to myself, an interesting mistake. Maybe somebody wanted to write, we laugh Mrs. Schmitz, uh -huh. or, or we laugh to have English with Mrs. Schmitz. But we laugh to Mrs. Schmitz didn't make any sense to me. So I was standing there looking to my students, smiling and saying, oh, an interesting mistake any idea to improve it. And then there was a giggling in the class. <laughs> and then I was repeating my question because I said to myself, I did not get it. Well, and they were even laughing and the laughter got louder and louder. And in the very end, I was really puzzled. I said, well, what's going on? Please help me. Uh, what good mistake am I doing here right now? And then the writer of this um, sentence told me, well, maybe you don't know it. I, I did not know myself. There is a channel, RTL, uh, and uh, the slogan of this channel is, we love to entertain. Mm -hmm. And this, we love to Mrs. Schmitz, meant that lessons with me were always kind of entertainment, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and, and this student had to explain it to Mrs. Schmitz, who did not get it. And that was a big compliment, right? And, uh, well, this, this getting to know that I was somebody who was entertaining, though vulnerable, though making mistakes, though not knowing a lot, yes, um, that being human, yes? Mm -hmm. And, and that makes um, a an, uh, learning atmosphere really interesting, obviously. And Indeed. I work a lot. Yes, and, and in ethics, I learned a lot. Um, and I, I uh, spoke a lot with my pupils about, well, in every lesson, really, what really makes them uh, um, fun. What is fun for them learning? What, what makes it much easier? And that is an atmosphere of not having to be afraid to make mistakes, to be supported with the idea in planning the lessons, in correcting the, um, um, in giving the marks. So this being in a democratic, more or less uh, democratic, free, atmosphere in a protected atmosphere no anxiety to be uh, ridiculed embarrassed blah, blah, blah. and uh, and to laugh a lot uh -huh. yes and sometimes we laughed so much that i really had said well 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 okay okay back to what was our topic yes so um yes and coming to the beginning when i when i started i wanted always to be the therapist and the artist and in the end i realized i was the therapeutic teacher and the artist as a teacher there i was on the stage yes so i i, I had my my audience my spectacle so uh um but i would have never learned so much as an artist those students with their honesty with their criticism sometimes really harsh they were my best teachers yes as human being because they really helped me to always come back to being vulnerable being honest showing up the way i am right and, and um, 
you te- you learn a lot by teach. There's this expression yeah. in Spanish, enseñando aprendes, which is yeah. like you, you by teaching you learn, right? Yes, and uh, once I created um, a theater play, Freiburg, Frei that means free, and Borg that is castle. So free yourself from the inner castle. Yes, and the castle because you expect yourself to be like this, to do that in this way. Yes, so this this topic, and it refers to the city I studied, Freiburg in southern Germany in the Black Forest. Well, and 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 this theater play is about um, not being somebody special. It starts with I'm a star, and then there are a lot of scenes in which I, the protagonist, failed as an artist, a singer, a musician, a, a writer, whatever. And in the very end, there is no film like in the beginning. I'm a star. In the very end, there is me on stage saying in person. The same sentence, but not I am a star. In the end, I work with the sentence, and in the end, it is I am me. Uh-huh. Yes. So this getting totally in peace with myself, and um, that I could do this is because really, really, my my students were my best uh, therapists. Uh-huh. Yeah? They mirrored my, my self-doubt, and they were in the very end the one who said, well, Mr. Schmitz, you are the artist, you are the, the musician, you are, yes, and they supported me to believe in myself when I did not, yes, so, and, uh, and I did that play, and I did music, and I did exhibitions, and in the end, because of COVID, I even um, um, ended the book I had started to write when I was in my 30s, wow. and I published it. And um, it was all because that power of uh, what I taught to my students, Uh stand up for yourself, um, face um, failures, um, came more and more into my own mind, yes. Uh, Well, starting with stopping to work as a teacher, that was the biggest um, challenge to myself. And then to uh, stand up for my creativity, well, I had still my topics, as you know, with, well, not having put that online course online, by the way, or publishing or trying to publish other stories I've already written. Um, yes, but back to the German school system, those regulations which became stricter and stricter and stricter, they were a big contradiction to uh, to the two tasks which we have as teachers in Germany. The one task is to educate, yes, um, and the others. Whatever that means, right? Yes, to educate. Well, I yes, yes, and um, well, I say it in German. Um, the Erziehungsauftrag und der Bildungsauftrag. So the one is to educate. Uh, and I understood it the way to uh, accompany the students on their way into life. And that means all important topics which we were uh, talking about, uh, which we have been talking about during our talk now. This, um, well, who am I? Who are you? How can we come into touch? How can we solve our problems? Till how can I do all my paperwork? Yes. How can I create a website in our times and in a way that um, uh, it does not arise new problems with uh, all those uh, text things, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so this is what I understood mostly about my job to to accompany them to education as to teach them to live a good life. And that means to be in a good contact with yourself and the others. And and this conveying uh, knowledge is the other part, which to me, it was always the less, the much less important part. Of course, I taught them the language and um, stuff in all the subjects I taught them, especially drama. Uh, was my most fa- my, my most most favorite subject, which I did not um, learn. I'm not an actress, but I played theater all the time. And when they saw teachers saw me on stage, I also was allowed to teach um, uh, drama. That was great because well, there you could 
put also the, the art and music in it and ethical problems, yeah, so, and even English in scenes. So um, I'd like to hear more about, you said you taught ethics, right? Which is something that has kind of disappeared from the school system here. They just don't teach that. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And like I, to give you a compare, one of the things I, I focused on, I, remember I told you I was building a curriculum. Um, so the Japanese school system came to learn that they don't actually take any tests until they're like in fourth grade. And the entire early education is focused on how to behave and ethic. Like they make the kids clean the classrooms and clean the hallways and clean the bathrooms. And so they're teaching them community, right? In a sort of very sort of hands-on ethics, right? Don't throw things on the floor because you're going to have to clean that when someone else does it, right? Be considerate of your sort of fellow man. And I was like, wow. And, and here in America, like, they just don't teach ethics. Like, they don't, it's not even an option. I don't even know where you can take it. So, and I feel like they really should. Like, so I'm kind of curious, what, what did you teach there in Germany? Well, first of all, it was part of every lesson, yes, to leave the classroom the way we, we found it. Yes, uh, I was happy to have at least in English one room uh, where the pupils came to my room, but I had also to leave that room for the art room, for the music room, for the drama room, uh, and sometimes I had ethics in other classrooms. So I did not start before the room was clean. Yes, and I did not leave before the room was clean. So that was part of, and hopefully of every teacher's lesson, um, as well as. Um, a good German was part of every lesson. Yes, of course, not in English, but, but in all the others. So I, I, I always took the folders with our homework. I also did written things in music and art um, or the, the productive things they did in music and art or drama. So I always took the folder and I corrected their German mistakes. And I really wanted to give back uh, wanted them to give me uh, back their folders so that I could see their work on the um, corrections. So I was uh, 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 a kind of strict teacher in special areas. That means how socialized they were, how nice they were to each other and to themselves, and how they, they, they took things seriously, of course. But, but all the other staff, they were included, yes? But there were some rules like, as you said, um, well, I, I, I had pupils and I put it into my theater play, by, by the way, because once I came into the classroom and there were all paper balls on the floor. And they said, well, we have to clean it first. And no one wanted to do it. And then I said, well, what's going on here? Uh, and they say, well, I do make the beginning. And I started doing, and then they say, well, you do it well, you can go on. Yes, because we have a cleaning system here, yes? So, and um, and in the background in my theater play, there, there, theater play, there is this off writing, what am I doing here? Yes, so I was often asking myself, what am I doing here? when I was confronted with pupils, with students who, um, because they existed, who really thought uh, the whole system had to work for them, yes? And they had just to sit and, and get uh, information without uh, intervening, without, without uh, well, <sighs> doing their part, being responsible for their contribution as well, right? Um, and they're all, like, accountability is a very... Yes. Common ethical theme, right? Accountability. Are you accountable to yourself, to, to the people around you? Are you a, yeah, you mentioned like being a good German. You know, what does that mean? What does that entail? Does that mean you're considerate yes. of the rest? You're, you're orderly? You're, uh, you know, whatever that means. I mean, like in Japan, being Japanese means you are considerate of the people around you, right? And that yes. is a view that they have of themselves. And they don't hold you, they assume that, like, it's, it's Japan's just kind of its own little world. But there's a lot of interesting things about Japan that are, I, th I think, admirable. And, and you could theoretically 
I don't know if you can duplicate Japan, but you can adapt some of those things like, you know, making kids clean the bathroom certainly goes a long way. If you go to a bathroom in Japan, they're always spotless, right? People really take care. It's amazing. It's like, right, so. Right. Well, uh, well, German students never clean the, the toilets, by the way, but that would be uh, interesting too. At, at least, um, well, I think the more social the school is, the more it is also mirrored in places where there is no control, like the toilets. Uh -huh. Yes. Um, I cannot say that for the schools, for the public schools I was in as a teacher. Yeah. Uh, the toilets often looked not like a that war good. zone. Yes. Um, well, Well, that was totally different in that uh, private school. Yes, there the um, the director was standing in the corridor when you entered, and he was greeting everyone like this: "Morning," and he knew the names. Uh -huh. And um, in the last years, I was standing in front of my classroom, and I was uh, shaking hands with my pupils if they liked. Otherwise, I just said, good morning. So I was really greeting everyone by name. Good morning, good morning, and then saying the name. Mm -hmm. and, and also by saying goodbye. Yes. So some, some just gave, gave me five. Some just uh, waved their hand, jumped, uh, just nodded their head. But this kind of, um, yes, taking somebody serious, seeing somebody. Yes. So, yes. But a lot, a lot of interesting questions there. Right? Yeah. yeah, the you know, there's a guy. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with him. There's a guy named John Taylor Gatto, who I stumbled on a few years ago, and he used to be a he used to be a teacher in New York, and he he was a teacher for like thirty something years, and he won all these awards for like Teacher of the Year and stuff. And then towards the end of his career, he's like. He, they would give him an award and he would give a speech that basically just pooped all over the education system. Right. Oh. And he started just talking about the reason I win awards is because I specifically don't do what you tell me to do. I break all the rules and I throw all that stuff right. out. Right. Right. <laughs> and, oh, can you, can you please tell, uh, um, say, say uh, the name? John yeah. Taylor Gatto, G-A-T-T-O. But one of the things he, he talks about, and I actually give it to my students, is, is that uh, the school systems, like the environment you're in a school system is totally unnatural. Like it's, it's hard for you to even learn what society's like because the school system is, is such an unnatural sort of environment. Like it's, it's a synthetic to, for lack of a better word, right? Like you're never gonna be in a situation in life outside of school where you're with a bunch of people who are your own age and you're all obeying one person it's like the closest you get to that is maybe a factory job or prison right <laughs> right you're like it's Foucault. Foucault. you you know Foucault, right he compared a uh, prison to school for example mm -hmm. yes uh, this strict system of what to do what not to do and then you are punished here punished isolation there isolation, embarrassment, pushing pressure on, uh, threatening, yes. Oh my gosh. So I was very lucky that I also had the possibility to, um, to have some lessons um, only, some lessons only in, in advising. Uh, it was not therapy, but it was some kind of consulting I could offer in the school since I underwent my natural path of uh, psychotherapy. Mm -hmm. So I had a kind of certificate and I could prove that I was able to deal even with uh, deeper problems. And I, well, did a lot of trainings like nonviolent communication and garden trainings. So, and, um, and that was very amazing what you got to know uh, about the system, yes? So, what what people suffered from and well they only went to my place when they really felt like wanting to do it but some teachers came with them right uh, so peter has to and then well i said well come on goodbye and then i said well what is the problem and 
well, I could do this and that. Mm -hmm. Would you like to do it? And if he said, no, I don't feel like, I said, well, it's okay. Then it has no sense. Yes, start working if you don't feel like. But, but well, for example, then I said, well, but what what do you like to do instead of blah, blah, blah. And then, for example, he said, playing the drums. And I have never played the drum. I said, well, I, I see whether the music room is open and it's free and there was no class inside. And then I set him at the drum set and I um, let him first play the drums at the way he could. And later on, he was interested in getting to know a bit. And mm -hmm. I taught him to play the drum basically. And then he was the first to come to my consulting. And in the end, he got that kind of confidence to, uh, to really uh, cause that teacher uh, coming to me saying what's going on with him. He's, he's kind of changed. Yeah. So, so um, because he, he could do a little bit he liked. Yeah. That's always the path to getting people to learn things too. Like the, uh, that personal interest in some way you can, yes. it's, it's sort of a stepping stone to learning other things. And Because people, especially also uh, pupils, students, they want to learn, but, uh, but here they have to learn and special hmm. things in a special way. What, what, what would it be to, to just go somewhere where you just, may learn what you really want to learn. We would have so great medicine, uh, and doctors, architects, <laughs> teachers, whoever, um, carpenters, hairdressers, fashion designers, whatever. Every job has its importance, right? And I'm so happy about all the people who clean the streets because I could never do it because I have such a, a, a sensible noise, a nose, nose. I, 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 I could never do it, even if it were paid yeah. with much money. I cannot smell um, bad smells, yes? Yeah? So, yes, yeah, so. But this division also still in our society, if you study uh, and you have a special job like becoming a doctor or a lawyer or what else uh, is very famous, but I argued, well, maybe all that stuff, not a teacher. Yeah. <laughs> Teacher's job is not seen in the way it should be seen because it is really a very worthwhile job. You do a good of job, a good job if you do it in a... In a well School in a people orientated way, of course, right? The, the way the school systems are set up, right? I mean, they're they're like mass factories, right? So they they churn teachers as a sort of cog in the machine, right? So yeah. you're never going to get the sort of respect for that position, like yeah. because it it has a low, like I don't know what it is in Germany. I know it's pretty high in Finland. Like they they've really upped the standards for their teachers. Like you have to have a master's degree and you have to have all sorts of training to be a teacher in Finland. And they make a lot of money, and they pay them well and all that. Here, I mean, like like there's a lot of teachers. You know, first they treat teachers extremely badly in, in the United States. And like right now, it's just it's it's an ongoing crisis because they don't have enough teachers and then people go in you know i have friends that have been teachers they go in they last one or two years because they're treated so badly by the students by the administration like I, one of my friends she she actually i mean she taught high school and like a 15 year old kid actually choked her against the wall in one of the rooms because she got it and the administration didn't back her didn't expel the student didn't do anything for her right no she, yeah and, how, and say, how, how could they justify they are not intervening i don't know i told her she should not have gone to she should have just gone to the police and filed charges right and but they talked to her you know they don't want to look bad it's it's very it's sketchy right uh one of my friends just quit being a teacher you know the the student yeah there's so many issues where, where the, the staff do not have your back, right? Your administration does not support yeah. you. If there's an issue, it's much easier, I guess, for them to, I guess, deal with just punish you rather than sort of give you the, like, I don't, I haven't gotten in trouble myself in, in college, but I know some of my colleagues, you know, they'll have students that are cheating and doing stuff and they try to fail them 
and they go and ridiculously will complain to administration. I've even heard of them calling their parents to, to complain to administration in college. And they'll be like, just let them, let them do it again. Let them do it again. And you're like, are you kidding me? And, and like, I don't, I, I've sort of steered clear of those issues. Right. Cause I, I kind of told my boss, I was like, look at, I know, I'm not going to stress out about this. If what you're saying is that we're not going to have ethical standards is let's not even pretend to be ethical. If I have an issue and I can make it go away by just giving him an A, I'm going to do that. Cause if you're not going to mm -hmm. pretend to back me up, I'm not going to bring this drama on myself. Right. Yes. I can see, I can see the point. And, and that's how we're, we're dealing with it. And this is college, right? Even university level. And here they have, they're starting to implement things. Now I'm just going to rant, but like things like what they call PGR, um, passing grade retention, where you have to have certain numbers, right? And they make you do all these trainings on, you know, what they call DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion, and how you can help poor students and all this stuff. And you need to have more or less about two thirds of your class pass. Otherwise you're not doing enough. And what all the professors <laughs> do Right, the easiest way to fix this is just to make your class easier, right? Mm -hmm. And then you don't have to deal with the extra training because if you don't have your numbers up, they're like, oh, well, now you're going to have to do all these hours of training. And you're like, ah, oh, you know what? I'll just make my class easier. Result. Yeah. Yes. At yes. some point, I said, well, why are we even teaching? Like, yes. Yes. Well, well, I I had my back more or less in uh -huh. uh, in the public schools in the private of course but in the public school as well more or less well that um, uh, we are told to earn a lot of money uh, here in Germany as teachers um, I don't have a comparison um, uh, but as me as somebody who left the school years before the original ending of my school career, I lost a lot of money. Um, I'm a retired one already, right? And uh, I get a pension. But money was never my topic. That's why I always reduced to make my art, my music, my theater. Um, so that's why I don't suffer much. But um, times ago, it was different when you um, retired earlier, you you did not lose that much money. Mm. Yeah? So, um, well, but uh, because of COVID uh, and all those reg regulations, even more regulations, many teachers uh, did not want to go on working as a teacher. And that's why the regulations concerning getting um, a civil servant is lowered or the the, the money uh, is you can earn got a bit higher so they try to find some compromises but um well and because of of covid um, i think many people realized that the job is not that bad because they had to do homeschooling yes and they realized oh my gosh what do they have to do they don't have only one or two or three how many kids you have but 30 maybe well at my school it were maybe about 20 25 but i also had classes with 30 but also in that public school in that private school uh, maximum 15 yes and later 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 i thought to myself why didn't i stay at that school yes okay the income was much less and it was not clear how long this school could exist yes and um, and of course when the wall fall here in berlin uh, 89 yes 89 that was my door opener to go there where i always wanted to live as a student already i wanted to go to berlin but I returned because uh, it took so much time to enter the city and to leave it because of the wall, yes? Um, and I like to have freedom and that's why I returned to Freiburg and then changed just, just my study at university uh, to pedagogical high school where I could continue with pedagogical studies and psychology, but put also beside English art and music. 
Yes. Um, and from all the cities here in Germany, just to say that, that means Cologne and Freiburg, Trier, where I did my training as teacher, and Bonn. Berlin still is very liberal. And um, um, that's why I think that also the schools are still kind of maybe even more liberal than in many other um, public schools, yes. So uh, the schools I worked in, I could really um, stand for them, really, even if there were some problems with, uh, well, with every kind of problems you can have at schools. Um, but you were still given autonomy to, to uh, sort of design your own curriculum within some framework, right? Yes, well, well, there were, of course, all those plans, but I interpreted them very freely. <laughs> when I started as a, as a teacher here in Berlin, I first tried to discuss it, to lay it open, what were my ideas, and then I had totally uh, many problems. And then the older I got, the less I said, but the more I did my way. Yes, yeah, so... Yeah. Um, Yes. That's what I learned as a college professor early on, too. I was, first, they tell you to do this, and then I was like, you know, no one's really checking up on my class. I can kind of teach what I want. Yeah, no, no, really. But but it was important to tell my, my students that this was uh, our space, and there are many other spaces mm -hmm. here at school and uh, in Berlin and in Germany and in Europe and everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is important, that's also something you have to learn to adjust the way you uh, want to, to live the life you want to live. Yes, so that has nothing to do with faking, but to um, stick to the most important rules. And, and some rules are without any sense, but to have a discussion because of these little unimportant agreements you can make, that is also some kind of wisdom. Yes, that's why I said, if a teacher wants you to throw out the chewing gum, I would not uh, start a fight because that's not really important, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. So... Um, and so there were some things I said to myself, okay, okay, uh, but but it did not really touch my inner values. Yeah. Oh, by by the way, in my lessons they could always eat if they were hungry, and yeah. they could always drink. I just said, please stick to water, because water is really important. Uh, if you drink Coke or something like that, which contains a lot of sweet that does not make your brain work the way it could work. And uh, they also tried to discuss that with me. And I said, okay, then I don't allow you to drink anything. That is your decision. So so there were strict rules in some ways, yes, because I, I could not uh, support uh, drinking uh, sweetie drinks, for example. Yes. So, now it's can they have their cell phones, right? Can they have their cell phones? Oh, yes, that was another topic. And with me in the very end, uh, well, there were classes. They had to come and put their cell phones on my desk before starting. Yes, that was another rule. No cell phone. No using a cell phone. And they had a fun to have a second phone, uh, mobile phone. Yes? <laughs> cell phone oh like they had fun to have another uh, chewing gum or only threw a bit of the chewing gum into the dustbin um so actually you could not fight anything at all totally yes but then i said okay if you feel better now showing me your second uh, what what is your need which must be fulfilled so then yeah. i put it like this and then after after this for once and the other time, uh, uh, the problem was less less um, obvious at least. Yeah. So, um, well, I was no magician. Yes. That's what we're like. What is so important? That that's the the thing that gets me with people and their and it's not just kids. Like it's it's a lot of grown people. Like they always have their cell phone out. I mean, you go to dinner. Oh, yeah. There's like you see people. <laughs> like people, a table in a restaurant with four people and they're all on their cell phones like why did you even go out to hang out with people if you're just going to be on your cell phone yes yes so so what is going on with the cell phones in the states 
Uh, they're ubiquitous at this point. Um, my policy, and I, I, you know, this last year when I, now I'm teaching online, but my last, earlier this year, I had in-person classes and I really re starting to rethink my cell phone policy because originally I told them, look, you're adults. I'm not going to tell you what you can or cannot do with your cell phones. Um, just keep in mind that I do see you, right? And if I'm lecturing and I see you with your cell phone out, I remember you. And you know what? To be honest, I kind of hate you, right? Like that person you are on the inside, I hate that person because you're being rude to me. And I'll remember that. So next time you ask me, can I turn this in late? I'm going to be like, no, nah, I don't think so. <laughs> but this this semester, I mean, a lot of them, they just do. They, they still had their cell phones out and they were, would be reading. And that sometimes I'd be like, why are you here? Like, I don't take attendance, right? I, sometimes I give you pop quizzes, but if you're just going to come here and play on your cell phone, you can just stay home. Like, you're just here to insult me at this point. Well, how old are your students, by the way? Uh, they can be anywhere from 19 to 65, right? Mm. The full range. Because you are only teach at university, right? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Yes, oh, that makes such a difference, doesn't it? I think. It used because to be. Yeah. Come to you because they really chose coming well, to you, mine, right? Depending on what, what class it is. So U.S. history is required. Um, but world okay. civilizations, which I teach, and Latin American history, those they've elected to be there. So they're usually a little better. Um, so we can, I mean, I, I go off topic all the time and I shoo away, <laughs> I, like I just shove world history into U.S. history when I teach it. I'm like, well, you're going to learn about what was going on in the world. So, you know, I talk, you know, if I talk about, World, like right now I'm talking about World War II, right? And I'm like, all right, well, we're going to zoom out and go to Italy and see what happens with the rise of fascism, how it comes to, starts in Italy, goes to Germany, kind of goes to Spain as well, which nobody talks about. You see, what were they actually saying? And I give them the fascist manifesto, right? written by Mussolini and, and then I ask them some questions about it and they're always like hey this is a really hard document to understand I'm like yeah I know it's because the fascists aren't really clear about what the hell they're doing <laughs> right and everybody you read it and you're like I don't know what he's talking about it's like nobody does that's one of the fun things about fascism is it's kind of crazy right it doesn't make always make it's not always super coherent right but mm -hmm. they kind of point is that they, they learn a little bit about Italy, a little about Germany, a little bit about Spain, as they're learning about US history, like how we get to World War II, what's going on, you know, Japan as well, right? I've been including that. So anyways, uh, the point of that is just, just like s spread out the, their sort of attention. Um, but but why, why are you teaching online now? Uh, because my wife just had a baby, so I, I made it to where oh, I can stay at sure. home and help. Yeah, now we've got, yeah. So is, it has nothing to do with the COVID uh, atmosphere? Uh, not anymore. So I was lucky, like, when you mentioned about, you know, the COVID affecting like, and homeschooling, so we had, it, like, America transform. I'm sure Germany did too, but the education, so when they forced everybody to teach online, Uh, the teachers, right, they had never been trained to teach online. I was lucky in that I already done the training and I'm certified and I've taken all these courses. So I'm, I'm actually really good at teaching online. But most teachers weren't. They had no idea what to do. And the parents saw this, right? And they, they could see how disorganized it all was. And so what ended up happening here is that there's been a massive boom in homeschooling, right? Because a lot of parents were just like, what are these people doing? Like they, they don't know, these te their teachers don't know what the hell they're doing, right? <laughs> <laughs> so they're like, well, if I have to teach my kid at home anyways, and you know, a lot of people have lost their jobs. So there, there was just, it's just been this sort of explosion in homeschooling and, and you know, talking about trends in education, right? there's a lot more available online. Like, do, like give you another example the last sort of week of of u.s history too and world civilizations i i teach them it's like look you like i teach a lot of community college and also university but for my community college students you know like you're quickly coming to a point where everything's going online right and american universities are obscenely expensive right obscenely expensive so like There are univer I tell them there's universities in Europe that are offering free tuition courses in English for everybody, right? 
you can go to school in Europe, right? And I guarantee you, when you go out to get a job, you know, what looks better, you know, that you went to, you know, university at Dusseldorf or that you went to, you know, UT El Paso, right? And it, and it'll be cheaper. And you're quickly getting to a point where you can probably study at La Sorbonne in Paris online, living in America and still paying less. Mm-hmm. And that day is coming, right? So think about these things. You know, University of Singapore is, you know, a lot of East Asian universities are actively trying to recruit international students and they'll, they'll help you out with fees and everything. And it, it's an amazing experience for you and it'll probably still be cheaper than an American university. You have a lot of options now. And as you know, you can, uh, cause I have students, you know, I also teach in, in New Mexico in this university in New Mexico. And you know, you're like, you live in a small town in New Mexico, you're studying online. Why limit yourself to New Mexico? If you're going to study online, you could be studying in, you know, Berlin in Paris in London in Tokyo and you know and that's coming fast right like you already have when I was mentioning homeschool there I've seen companies now where they're contracting teachers from Singapore from their school system which was allegedly the number one school system and now they'll teach your kids right for like 300 bucks a month it's like you can now send your kid to the best you know the best school system in the world for 300 dollars a month how are you going to, how is, you know, American schools supposed to compete with that, right? So it's, it's an interesting development that, that's been happening. Now, teaching yeah. online is not the same as teaching in person. Yes, of course. All that uh, social um, aspects are not involved, right? Um, right. But it's interesting. You, you said that in the States, um, parents realized, oh, what are the teachers doing there? I can do better. Did I mm-hmm. understand it right? Because here it was the way around. Oh my gosh. Uh, uh, yes. So, um, and then they were thinking that, that this situation uh, now is only um, be with, uh, with one pupil in general. Yes. But um, well, of course not. There are also the others. But they realized that uh, that the teacher now can do as if there were only one. Yes, by brighten up the screen. Yes, and then he can only see this person, um, forgetting about the others at that very moment. But but what's yeah. going on when you have twenty in front of you? So so that really made many parents uh, have more respect towards the work teachers are doing. But mm. that's interesting that it is the way around the states. By by the way, what are the costs of uh, schooling in uh, in the states for for public schools or for pro- uh, is there uh, a difference? Yes, public it's schools different. are are uh, fully subsidized, right? As far as um, up okay. till twelfth grade, they're fully paid for through taxes. So you don't have to pay anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, private mm-hmm. schools, there there is depending on so America has a. Um, the United States has a federal system, so every state has slightly different policies. Uh, most of the time, private schools are fully privately, so you have to pay the full tuition. Now, there is something called a charter school, which some schools apply for, which is to uh, try to get federal funding um, as if they were a public school. Uh, and this kind of varies from state to state. Uh, so there are here in Texas, for example, charter schools, which are kind of like private schools, but they get funding from the state, but they usually have some conditions to go to them, usually like a lottery, like you have to apply to go and then they just kind of randomly pick who gets to go there. Um, so it, it, it's, 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 it's a goofy system, right? There's, it's still, let's say it's still got a lot of kinks in it. Uh, mm. Now, universities are, semi-publicly funded depending so community colleges local community colleges get a lot of funding you still have to pay tuition but it's a much 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 lower rate Um, state universities um, receive some funding not a lot and you still have to pay pretty exorbitant tuition there Um, and then there's I, the university system in the United States is is, is kind of a racket, right? It, it's 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 designed to bleed money out of you. They don't acknowledge 
I could bitch about this for days, right? But it, it it's it's made to be as prohibitive and as expensive as possible, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like, um, you know, I know there's a lot of universities in Europe that are just fully subsidized. I mean, even La Sorbonne is like 300 euro a semester, right? Here, you're looking like the local university here where I live, UT San Antonio, you're probably going to pay in the neighborhood of four thousand dollars a semester for a full load of classes. Thousand dollars a semester? How how does a semester last? Uh, half a year, four months. Yes. Us, yes. Okay, here it is three months, um, and then three months um, break for um, writing uh, works or studying. Yes. So it is also one semester, half a year. Yes. Yeah, here, so you have a fall semester, a, a spring semester, and then there's a shortened summer semester. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they, they make them in, insanely expensive, you know, beyond all justification. Mm -hmm. It's it's a rapidly, so what, what it creates is a problem is nobody can afford school so that there's massive student loans given to you at increasingly abusive interest rates. And so now student debt has exploded to be the highest, you know, more than automobile debt or credit debt, right? And so it's starting to become a problem because people aren't able to pay back their loans, right? And people are, you know, you got $70,000 in debt for a degree that gets you a job that pays 35K, right? So it's, it's increasingly a problem here. Um, we'll see how, you know, uh, we'll see how they deal with it. Um, usually, you know, the great, that old Churchill quote about Americans, he says, you can always count on Americans to do the right thing after they've exhausted all the alternatives. <laughs> right? yeah. So they might eventually reform the education system, but not until it completely breaks. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, well here, 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 the system has just um, improved by um, making new re regulations, regulations, regulations. This you have to do, that you have to do, and this yeah. way, and uh, more pressure, pressure, pressure. Um, and it is amazing because there are so many research works telling all that we were discussing about, right? The importance of all that what we're discussing about. Um, of course, with, with, um, with introducing the subject ethics as, um, as, um, 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 as a duty lesson, mm -hmm. that was kind of a good step. It was um, a substitute for religion because only some uh, chose religion because that is free here in Germany to choose religion or not. Um, I don't know whether it is everywhere the case, by the way. Well, but to um, to leave that problem behind, ethics arose in the school system. And uh, to me, it is a really good decision because there you can talk about all the subjects we were talking about, if you are a teacher who dares to speak about love or death or coping with disease and with loss and with all that. You can also um, 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 hide behind uh, uh, topics like um, the comparison of different uh, religions or or more, more um, philosophical stuff, yes. Um, but to me, it was the door opener to do things like um, uh, inviting pupils to sit in front of each other, two pupils sit in front of each other. And I asked them, what do you think may we do now? And maybe due to my way of um, teaching, they said, we say to each other compliments, one after the other. I said, that's a great idea. I did not think of that first. And so they started to do this and they arose um, a fantastic atmosphere. And then I did what I wanted to do. And then I said, now for just one uh, minute, I'll look into my mobile phone. Um, 
you just look into each other's eyes without doing anything, just looking into it, it's an experiment, and we will see what works. And oh, they were uh, kind of strengthened by all the compliments, and they really um, went into that experiment. And some were, of course, a bit giggling, and, and some put off their spectacles so that they could not see that clearly. Yes, so they had their little tricks all accepted. And one was left over and I said, well, you have to do it with me. And the first thing he did was putting the, the spectacle beside, right? So, and um, well, and then um, I said, well, another round, yes, another round. And in the end, we did this for more than some minutes, two minutes, three minutes. And then I stopped because I said it was really challenging. And, the, and then we exchanged our experiences. And it, it, it is really a good way to rise up the, the atmosphere of um, confidence and uh -huh. of feeling seen. And, um, and they wanted to start the ethic lessons like that. Can you imagine? great and then there was the challenge to even uh, take some more minutes and there is really maybe you already know it a research work about if people look into each other's eyes for some time and the longer the better they really um, develop feelings of sympathy and even uh, lovers they they could feel their love even more yeah. so simple connected. human connection Yes, yes. So, and uh, well, this is what I like to do with ethics. That's what you're not doing, right? When you're doing this, you're not looking at people in yes, the face. Yes, yes. That's why I try to look into the camera all the time, though I know it is a pity I cannot see into your face. Yes, yeah. but 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 if I uh, don't look uh, here and I try to see you, I don't see into your fa face. Yeah, either. I, need, I need to remember that because I'm always looking at you on the screen. I need to look at the camera. I forget. Yes, yes, because um, may you please look into the camera um, because uh, you may see now that if you look into the camera, you cannot see your eyes, of course, mm -hmm. uh, or, but, but you can see my eyes, yes? And I can see that you are at least looking a bit into the direction of my eyes. Mm -hmm. And that is much better than before to me. Okay. Yes, yeah. yeah, so... Yes, it's a good so, Yes, um, uh, for me it was also um, a challenge right from the beginning. I said to myself, I want to do it even if it doesn't really help to see you, but it is a kind of, um, well, I want you to be. So, the what, one made, who gets me. what made you come up with that idea of looking people in the eyes in class? It was also of uh, that idea of getting into touch and getting even more into touch and and strengthen our atmosphere of trusting each other of confidence of of uh, showing each other each other yes showing up this 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 topic which we always um, come back to yes this vulnerability this showing up this this connecting because because this is what makes people open up for for everything for learning so yeah. I can tell you that in in college and I'm sure in the high schools, if I tried to do that as a rule, what my administration would say is you can't do that because that might make somebody feel uncomfortable. So you can't have a policy like that. Yes, but you can do it like I, I said. I, I I did not go to a totally uh, foreign class. Uh -huh. I, I went there to a class which I already knew, who already knew me, of course. Well, I, would I would still do it. I just wouldn't tell yeah. the administration. Of course, of course, <laughs> do it. And and especially as um, as something to strengthen the atmosphere. Yes, the connecting. You can just, you you can speak about how to connect with people. How, how well, if you do it in your history class, um, how do people connect in the USA? May, maybe by giving five, I don't know. How do they do it in, in a, a European, a Southern European countries, kissing here, kissing there in the air? Yes? There's a lot of kissing, especially in France. It's like, yes, it's everybody. But they, but they do it in the air, yes? So, 
So this could be a great topic concerning history. Yes. And then, uh, well, let's make it like, uh, are you open to a little experiment? Yes. How how people can also con con connect that is with eye contact. And and you can also start the way my, my pupils did with, with first saying something nice. Yeah. It can it, it can re refer outward appearance or if they know each other a bit better already, something concerning their character. And then another row, round, yes, connecting. Mm -hmm. As a first connecting with with uh, making compliments, you can say, well, how do they know how to connect? Oh, I don't, I don't need to tell you as a teacher how you could do the lesson, but it's just my. Well, I, I, I like to. Uh, <laughs> yes. There is the teacher in myself, right? And um, I would start to do it with um, how, well, if I would teach uh, history, how do you know connect people in other countries? So, yeah. And then how do they connect here in the States? And uh, what what way is one way you really like to do? Aha, uh -huh. being nice to each other, getting compliment. Uh -huh. And then you can start with that. And then an experiment by, of course, you mentioned by looking at each other, you come into contact, especially by flirting, yes. And uh, that's what we are doing, yes. You can also interpret as flirting, but just looking, not not without doing anything, like uh, doing this or <laughs> just looking into each other. A normal human connection, right? Yes. And this is part of every plan in, in, in school or university to uh, to be able to cooperate. And this is um, a method to cooperate better, very easily. Incidentally, this is something that maybe 20, 30 years ago, you know, when we were younger, you didn't need to teach people because we always had to look at people in the face. Like it's something that, that is like, that we have yes. to develop in response to modern society with, with phones, right? It's something that we didn't, yes. have, you didn't have to take time to teach people before. And now you do. And, it, you know, whether or not, I, I kind of think it should be included in, in the school system in a curriculum like these simple things make huge difference in your life right like not being able to connect with people and going through life not looking people in the eyes and just being terrified of interactions is going to hurt you in life definitely yes. i i i agree i think it is even much more difficult for people to connect mm -hmm. uh, via eye contact but uh, it always was wasn't it i cannot remember being having been able to uh, connect somebody by looking uh, long into uh, their yeah. eyes yes yeah, so so it is um, well there are some countries where it is even forbidden to be to look a bit longer into the eyes i think it is uh, the asian culture even right or the arabic countries i, I don't know but but it is even like an offend mm -hmm. right or like an attack yes you intrude into privacy <laughs> privacy right yeah it, yeah. it yeah. depends asia is an interesting place and it's like i also yeah, yeah. Vietnam, even in some, not so much in Japan, but you know, Vietnam people will just stare at you from across the street and they're like, oh, look, what are you doing here? You're just, yeah, <laughs> it's not outright point at you. Right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, face to face, they're, they're generally not, uh, well, you know, it, it kind of depends on your, like Japanese are, are very sort of polite and they'll look away. They, they're very uh, shy. What we would think of as shy, they won't look you in the eyes for very much at all. Uh, Vietnamese are a little different. Or, well, actually, they're a lot different, but mm -hmm. Chinese also, you know, Chinese are probably, in, in my opinion, the, the most um, personable. Yes. And they're almost too personable in some <laughs> sometimes. I have Chinese neighbors uh -huh. uh, with whom I'm uh, good friends. And um, it astonished me that they are very open in general, very. Yeah. But, I thought maybe because he is a theater director, she is a choreographer and a dancer, maybe because of their artistic world they they are in, they are more open to uh, contacting. Uh, I don't know, but if you say um, among the Asians for you too, the Chinese seem to be very open. Yeah. Um, I can prove it by my, just by my Chinese experiences, yes? Yeah. Excuse you can like 
you can talk to to Chinese tourists and Chinese people abroad. They, they'll talk to you, right? They'll talk directly to you, and they're they're generally pretty fun. Um, well, that were not not my pupils. I just had them in the so-called welcome class. Here in Germany, there are the so-called welcome classes too, mm -hmm. where students from many countries came to learn uh, German first, and I was the one who taught them uh, some English. Mm -hmm. yes. Uh, and then so far, I had some experience with uh, students from all over the world. That's also why. It's, yeah, that's. I get in, international students are a lot of fun. I mean, we can talk. I can talk about mm -hmm. that too. Like, you can sort of tell the difference in education. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I've had a couple, quite a few students from Hong Kong, um, mm -hmm. and China in general, or East Asia generally. That. The student, you could, the focus, I guess, in the East Asian education system is very rigorous and like memorize this, you like learn it, learn it, learn it. And what my, what my Asian students tend to have a problem with is that I'll, I, I tend to structure my, my essays very much as like, give me your analysis of what happened here. Why did it happen? What do you think should happen? And they're just like, you want my opinion? And they're just like, they don't know what to say and it takes them like half a semester <laughs> to figure out that it's okay to just say their own opinion yes yes that's that's what i experienced too yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. and then they, they like they're like i like this class we're like yeah how about that somebody asks you what you think yes well the the boy of my uh, neighbors he's 12 now but he came here two years ago he was 10 and, and he said to his parents, I hate school and I hate all my teachers because the only thing he knew was what to do and how to do what, how, yes. Yeah. And when he came here, it was like <gasps> paradise, yes. Uh, though I think here are a lot of strict teachers and strict regulations, but everywhere there are also more liberal teachers and more liberal headmasters and systems in in the school. And and what is good about this, the German school system uh, that um, the schools themselves have kind of freedom how to interpret some rules, yeah. Yeah? some rules. So for, for example, um, when I was about to open my practice here in my flat as a therapist, I, I already did a lot of consulting work at school. I asked my, um, my headmaster if that could be possible because I want to work more as a therapist and reduce my lessons here at school. He said, no problem, no problem. He could decide that, yes? Yeah, I decide autonomy. That. The, the, the main thing is that you are still the good t teacher you are, right? But uh, so, and and um, I left school before he left, but but I have never had this written um, certificate somehow mm -hmm. that here, here I give permission to Mrs. Sigrid Schmidt that she, because in Germany, you always have kind of certificates or permissions. And I have never had it in a written version yes and sometimes i felt a bit insecure because you always you have to have certificates blah, 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 yes so in the meanwhile i'm not more a teacher and I, it's totally okay to be a therapist um yes so yeah. well yes so let me have a, a view on my notes whether i mentioned everything which i thought could have been of well, any interest. We might have to do a second interview. <laughs> yes, but I think the most important things I did. Well, I'm sorry that in the very beginning I talked very much because we did not speak about the, the, the amount of time we could have. So I thought it is very important to 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 uh, to uh, contribute uh, by thoughts in the very beginning. <laughs> that's that's fine with me. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's what conversations are. So this is why we had so much fun on trains, because <laughs> we talked the whole way. <laughs> okay, yes, it was fun talking to you, and it was fun that we are on the same line, but that was clear to me, yes, from the way we, we exchanged our experiences already in the train, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. There's a reason we get along, right? Yeah. You know, we could do this again, too. Maybe we can get some commentary on some other things, like... Go check out that guy, John Taylor Gatto, see what you think. It, it yes. was pretty interesting for me.